hip hop's energy begins in the street gang culture, very specifically the black space. Okay. Cool Herc took that energy and created hip hop music. That's a good way to put it. Looping the brakes. That's a good way to put it. Right, okay. 50 years of hip hop. 50 years of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? It's a beautiful thing to celebrate. You know, hip hop is a worldwide phenomenon. Hip hop has fed a lot of families, have um, helped a lot of people, kept a lot of people positive. It has done a lot of positive things. There has been many nationalities that have all contributed to hip hop. You know, various nationalities. We even nowadays, we see Russians contributing to hip hop. There have been various different ethnicities, various different nationalities, all contributing to hip hop, making hip hop what it is now, making hip hop a global phenomenon as it is now. The thing about hip hop is that the early formation of hip hop was really never documented. It was really never video cameraed and taken pictures of. No one really documented it until maybe the second and third wave. There's no one person that invented break dancing or rap. Mm -hmm. It just, it just, it just, it just a wave until maybe the second and third wave, until, you know, the late 70s. That's when people started, you know, recording and, and taking photos and, and things like that. But as far as the very beginning of hip hop, a lot of it was never documented. Where's the footage of y'all B-Boys? Well, probably as us. In the 70s, you won't have any of that because they weren't doing that's that much. That's a shame too. Yeah, it is a shame. Herc has some home movies and he might have people with that. But you know, just, you know, unfortunately, you know, they didn't, we weren't thinking like that. So we have to go by the testimony of the people who was actually there. We have to go by the words of the people who was actually there. And you know, some of our viewers said that, you know, we need to canonize hip hop history. And I even heard KRS once say that, you know, as far as bringing people together, you know, to canonize hip hop history. We're not knocking anyone's perspective. No one's perspective is good. We're, we're including all perspectives, but we're gonna have to now come up with a history that makes some kind of sense. Mm -hmm. Some chronological sense, all the hype, what we said in the past, who did what, and so yeah. on. We're gonna have to come with evidence now. You're gonna have to say, you know, we're gonna have to come with the real, real. You know, but who are we gonna decide and say, yo, this is what it is. We're not moving from this. We're gonna canonize this knowledge, and this is what it is. So, you know, and I agree with that. I might not use the word canonize, but I do say, you know, we need to um, set hip hop history straight and put it in concrete for the future, you know, for the future generation. So it's no mistake. So it's no assuming. Right. A lot of people were not there and they can't say exactly what happened. Some of the people you got talking weren't there. Right. They weren't there. You came in the fucking 80s. We would have to go back to 1971. We would have to go back to 1972. We would have to go back to 1973. We would, if we really want to understand hip hop, we would have to ask Cool Herc what influenced him to dress the way he dressed. You know, who influenced him to wear, you know, sheepskins? Who influenced Cool Herc to wear sheepskins? How how did he know to do that? You know what I'm saying? Because from my understanding, from Cool Herc's own words, Cool Herc was not dressed in hip hop style when he came from Jamaica. What surprised you most about what the styles were? when you got to New York, you know, w w was, were the clothes different? Were, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 wasn't, I didn't have the hip clothes. I had, the, I had on the hick clothes. I had on the aviator hat that you pull over your ears and the flip up top. I had the wide corduroy jacket on. I looked straight like a hick. So how did Cool Herc learn to dress hip hop style? If we really want to understand the formation of hip hop, then we would have to go back and understand what shaped Cool Herc to do what he did. We're really dealing with hip hop's creation. What was going on in the Bronx streets in 1971, 1972, 1973? 75 and the Black Spades. Hey, the Black Spades were the largest, the largest street gang in New York City. The largest street gang in New York City. Yeah, that's what Monk was saying. He was saying in 71, just seemed like that's when everything exploded in 71. Boom! We had divisions in every single borough, plus divisions in Westchester County. So it was a huge thing. In 71, everybody wanted to be. I mean, that's when everybody came to Bronx down and shit and said, yo, I want to join, I want to join, I want to join. I joined the Spades in 1971. I became wow. Supreme Spokesman of the South Bronx. I was in the 17th Division. Yeah. And dude, we could put the Stevenson and stuff fighting them white boys and kick them all out. That's when it just exploded. Yeah, I kicked them I out. I mean, of we would sit here and you would see people coming from everywhere. People coming from everywhere. Right. Right. And then I had to make the thing up where, it's, you know, you just can't come over here and join the space, you know, and yeah. want a division. 
you got to come here with people. Yeah. You know, you got to have at least 20 people. Then you can have a division. Mm. Other than that, you could just be a spade. From my understanding, the black spades played a major part in what was going on in the Bronx streets at that time. And all around. I mean, everywhere. You know, you, you couldn't go nowhere and talk to those spades and shit. You know, we had the whole entire Bronx. Mm. From Co-op City to Patterson Project, 3rd Avenue, to uh, all the way up to Florida Road. We had everywhere. Right, right, right. Was y'all the biggest gang at that time? Yeah. 75 and the black space. So, you know, we in 2021 from 1971, celebrating 50 years of hip hop, celebrating the energy and the culture of hip hop. You know, our elders taught how hip hop basically stemmed or came out of gang culture and very specifically the African-American gang culture like the Black Spades. All right, hip hop's energy begins in the street gang culture, very specifically the Black Spades. Okay. Okay. Right. And then the influences for all of that certainly come out of gang culture, and very specifically the black spades. Uh, so when Herc came and did what, yo, know, they credited him for the merry-go-round. Right. The music was already here. Right. You know, the, the, the culture came from the gangs. Mm. The, the gangs was having having fun. You know what I'm saying? So we celebrating 50 years of the energy and the culture of hip hop. My brother Faye says we just celebrating 50 years of hip hop. 50 <laughs> years of hip hop, period. We starting, starting in June. With DJ Mario. Just, just what we were doing, by, by people seeing what we were doing, mm -hmm. that's what influenced everything. Yo, Faye, why don't you park right in here? We you can't park inside the parking lot. We gonna be gonna talk right there. I'll move. I'll see if there's a parking spot up there. Okay. Alright. Now let it be known. Okay. Right. Let it be known that the reason why people are so upset at Bronxdale, period. Oh, people are? I yeah, didn't know people well, Yeah, upset. people are. You, well, when I say people, I'm talking about some of the, the even the second and third generation hip-hop people. Um, you know, there's a couple, of, even a couple of my friends, you know, they're upset because of the, the basic lie that was told about hip-hop. Okay. And now the things are coming up to front. Okay. Comes are coming to coming to light. Okay. So since that's happening, you know, since that's happening now, people are really changing the stories. They're changing the timelines. Okay. They're changing this. Um, you know, uh, uh, even a, a, a good friend of mine that I that we always arguing, Charlie Rock. Okay. Even he came up to me and and he said, you know, we argue, we argue. But you're still my brother. Huh. You're still a spade for life. Huh. And when he, you know, and I said it back to him because, right. you know, he is my brother. Right. And so, yeah, we get sometimes we argue about the timelines of things. And sometimes we argue about all kinds of crazy stuff that we argue. But that's my brother. Right. And so, um, but like I said, even that, with that, that was... I would say when the dancing, the break, that part of break dancing mm -hmm. was, I want to say second uh, uh, generation, but it, it, it could have even been third generation because that's 77, 78, you know, 76. Well, they was break dancing to 74, 75. No, this, that's why I'm saying second, gener second, second or third gener generation. So you're saying the second right? generation So the of first ge ge generation was actually 71. Okay. Because that spade dance and all the other little things that was happening, okay. that was part of the break dancing. Oh, we, oh, that was right. it. Oh, oh, we, oh, but Monk had to be there. That, that was the second round. That was the second round song. Did break dance come from y'all? Yeah. It did? You're damn right. <laughs> wow. And y'all were stomping with that or what? No, we, we be in mm. the club. Oh, we uh, with the glory stuff, mm. you know, doing this, and we started break dancing. A lot of, lot of clubs didn't want us in there. 
generation. So the of first ge ge generation was actually 71. Okay. Because that spade dance and all the other little things that was happening, okay. that was part of the break dancing. Okay. Okay, so when they started doing all the tricks and uh, the, 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 you know, somersaults and stuff like that, that became a total different break dancing. Okay. Because it wasn't done to the beat. It was done to just, if you could do a flip, you do a flip. You could do back stuff, you could do, that's just a back stuff. So it wasn't done to the beat. And okay. that's what a part of break dancing was. It was done to the beat. It was done to the beat, you know what okay. I'm saying? Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's the big difference in, in what was happening with break dancing. My brother Faze brought up break dancing, you know, um, and with all of this confusion out here about, you know, um, Caribbean started hip hop. Hip hop was given birth to by Caribbean culture. Mm. Uh, I'm going to give 90% of hip hop to Jamaica. Mm. Certain questions have to be asked. Certain real questions have to be asked. You know, if we're going to be honest, you know what I'm saying? We're going to have to have the courage to ask certain questions. Who were the B-Boys before Rocksteady? You know, out the original B-Boys from 1973 to 1976, how many of the original B-Boy crews was predominantly Jamaican? How many of the original B-Boy crews was predominantly Puerto Rican? You know, what was the ethnicity of most of the original B-Boys? The brothers were the one that started breakdancing. Who were the B-Boys before Rocksteady? But what happened? It became a Spanish thing. Right. My brother, James Cruz, said that Puerto Ricans was guests in hip hop. Latinos in general, let's Latinos, just say that. Okay. The question comes, you know, was Puerto Ricans guests in early hip hop? And me personally, I wouldn't call them guests in early hip hop, but I definitely would say Puerto Ricans was minorities in early hip hop. When I say minority, I'm talking strictly about the population. What I'm saying is Puerto Ricans, their population was not dominant in early hip hop. Their population was basically small. From my understanding, back then in hip hop, Puerto Ricans was not so numerous. From my understanding, back in the early 1970s, Puerto Ricans was much more into their own Puerto Rican culture. They was much more into salsa, Tito Puente. The thing is, see, nowadays with all this mixing, a lot of us are mixing our genetics together, and you know, it just seems like people are starting to forget how it all started. People can't pass a good man. You know, some people make it seem like African American population and Puerto Rican population was like the same, you know, in early hip hop. And that just wouldn't be true. Puerto Ricans and blacks created hip hop. From my understanding, in early hip hop, Puerto Ricans was like a minority, their, their population. From my understanding, it was an overwhelming majority of African American energy in early hip hop. And when I say early hip hop, I'm talking about from 1971 to 1976. I'm talking about, you know, before the commercialization of hip hop. Puerto Rican, their population in hip hop became more prevalent, more predominant in the 80s. In the 1980s, that's when Puerto Rican population really started to gravitate towards hip hop. Let's ask Ku Herc how many Puerto Ricans was in his original crew. When he first started in 1973 with Coca Rock, 73, 74, how many Puerto Ricans was in Ku Herc's original crew? How many Puerto Ricans was in the original Zulu Kings, the first 10, 11? Zulu Kings, how many Puerto Ricans was in the original Zulu Kings? Let's ask Grandmaster Flash. When he was when Grandmaster Flash was a b-boy, when uh Melly Mel was a b-boy, how many Puerto Ricans was in their original crew? The overwhelming vibe, the overwhelming energy of early hip hop was strictly foundational African American. African American vibe and spirit and energy was dominant in early hip hop. Right on! Right on! Right on! Cool Hurricane create break dancing. Right. Mm. Graffiti. He ain't create graffiti. Right. And Puerto Ricans had a lot to do with that part. I think in terms of the influence of Puerto Ricans and, and b-boying, it's just the flavor that we bring into dancing. Like a lot of the moves in b-boying, you will see them back in the days in mambo and salsa and uh, all these Latin rhythms and they are being incorporated into hip-hop music. When we're talking about Crazy Legs and all these folks, the Rocksteady crew. That's that 80s Rocksteady stuff? Right. That's that. He's always been a fixture in hip-hop and this he Legs in particular is the most recognizable face 
and B-Boy. Who are the B-Boys before Rocksteady? You know, I think there's there's a misunderstanding that, you know, Puerto Ricans started breakdance. There's a misunderstanding that Rocksteady was some of the original B-Boys. I think this is a big misunderstanding in hip hop. And for Rocksteady, they didn't invent nothing. They were just in the right place at the right time and they picked up where we left them. Mm -hmm. That's as simple as that. That ain't knocking them, that ain't anything. That's just the fact and that's just the history. And it's cool, but you can't speak on shit that you don't know about. Right, or right. Because somebody told you. Who were the B-Boys before Rocksteady? The original B-Boys, from my understanding, was ADOS, FBA, Foundational African Americans. The brothers right. were the ones that started breakdancing. Now, from my understanding, ironically, it may have been Bronxdale with the most Puerto Rican breakdances from 1973 to 1976. In that time frame, it may have been Chuck City Crew with the most Puerto Rican breakdances, you know, active in hip hop at that time. You know, I need further confirmation on this. You had Chuck City Crew. Right. You know, you had my man like Johnny and all them. They were B-boys. They right. danced. You had Grace Jack, man. Puerto Rican, man. Running with the black space, man. Right. You know what I mean? A young space. A little brother Egger, man. May have been. I got to do more research on it and figure it out. But off top, it looked like between 1973 and 1976, Bronxdale, home of the Black Spades, Chuck City crew, had the most Puerto Rican breakdance. Because see, from my understanding, the original Zulu Kings, the original 11 Zulu Kings, didn't have any Puerto Rican breakdances. You know, and I never heard of Cool Herc having Puerto Rican breakdances with his crew. <laughs> What would you say they copied off of Mario? Why do we say yo? Chuck Chuck City Crew. That's who was out. It was Mario and the Chuck Chuck City Crew. 1973 to 1976 but again this is something that should be a public discussion on the history of hip-hop the real true history of hip-hop who were the b-boys before rocksteady and when hip-hop started from the very beginning you had puerto ricans there side to side with the black folks so when you hear people say puerto ricans was in hip-hop from the beginning yeah but in bronxdale you know with the black spades with mario from my understanding uh, Tex DJ Hollywood was the only Puerto Rican DJ in hip hop at that time. I told you the first three was Tex, Mario, and Spanky. Mario and Tex, right. they would play, right? And the gym had a divider. You ain't even heard nothing about it. On the South Bronx, they playing music, they playing this, okay. they playing that. Because how we know about that? Because we was gang busting. Right. We were gang busting. And we went on all every edge of the Bronx. <laughs> But again, this is something that the elders should come together and discuss and get straight. Okay. Because that spade dance and all the other little things that was happening, okay. that was part of the break dancing. Okay. Okay, so when they started doing all the tricks and uh, the, 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 you know, somersaults and stuff like that, that became a total different break dancing. Okay. Because it wasn't done to the beat. You know what I'm saying? So... That's the big difference in, in what was happening with breakdancing. Okay. Um, they don't put all the elements to hip hop, is what we were talking about before. Snapping. Snapping, right. Is a part of hip hop. Right. And Mr. Biggs was the MC for Bambada at that time. And we started the battles because then we used to talk about. Your mother looks so fat, she looked like the polar, you know, we had those kind of battles and stuff like that. Right. Okay. Snapping right. is definitely a part of hip hop. And so people don't add that element into it. Right. But that's a big element. See? Especially if the pioneers are the ones that got snapped on. Exactly. <laughs> when I got in, got a pair of cowboy, went to Boots, this girl in high school, Junior High School teased me to death. Yeah, look at him. He got on Roach Killers. Roach Killers. He, she had the whole <laughs> hallway just tear me up. Roach Killers, Roach Killers, and all that. And this is you guys made me this person. Right. You know, I was just a geek. You know, and geeks weren't cool back then. Right. Exactly. Exactly. When they, when they first sir. started, exactly. if they was the one get snapped on, and of course they, they know. Uh, exactly. You know, because and even, okay, and dress and fashion. That's the next part of right. it. Right now, 
when we were snapping, a lot of the crew that, like, if it's raining outside, uh -huh. we're inside the building in the staircase snapping. Right. So when we do get a chance to get on the mic, some of those snaps is going to be on the mic. You said something before, like, y'all was, um... To the beat, like y'all was snapping to the beat or something like that. Well, we just, like the dozen. The you dozen. Know, you play the dozen, it's talking about somebody mother and all that, and you're right. like so skinny, you got both eyes look through the peak hole, stuff like that. Right. You should rap with with that. So it started, it started as a, as we started just snapping, they started doing raps. You see what I'm saying? Right. So that was a part of it. That you know, and like I said, we were emulating Pink Meat Martin, and what was he doing? He was telling jokes. Okay. Here come the judge. All those cats got this to me because I am the judge and you can plainly see. Lay down the law. They better not judge for I'll bust the head because I am the judge. Here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. Here do I know? He is the judge. And what was he doing? He was telling jokes. Okay. So that's a part of the snapping. And so they don't put that element into it, and that's the part. Well, it could be an uh, element in our understanding of well, hip-hop, well, well, our well. 50th anniversary of hip-hop. Well, and, and that's what I'm, I'm saying to us. See, when we do this 50 years, this 50, these 50 days, we got to go strong. Right. And we want to invite all... We want to invite... F FBA, ADOS... Foundational African Americans, we wanna we wanna invite all our people to celebrate with us. Exactly. If we celebrating our culture, our right. African American foundational right. African American culture. Right. It's ours. It's ours. It's ours. And that's the key word. Right. It's ours. Right. And we're not gonna allow some other people right. to take it away. Immigrants. From us. Okay. We're not gonna <laughs> let them come over. Get out the way. We're not gonna let them just come here. And I agree with my brother Faze on this point. On the internet, you know, it shows, you know, little um, articles about who hurt, you know, it's supposed to be uh, planning some kind of museum in Jamaica. And I think that's great. You know, I think that's a great thing to put a museum, a hip hop museum in Jamaica. There should be a hip hop museum in a lot of other countries around the world. When you take into consideration uh, the, the impact that hip hop has around the world, it's understandable. It's great to put museums in Jamaica, Caribbean, Barbados, put hip hop museums all around the world. You know what I'm saying? But but then when you start talking about Jamaicans or reclaiming hip hop or like it feels like immigrants, Caribbeans are just trying to take away the credit for hip hop. You know, I've seen articles where they're trying to say, well, you know, uh, building a hip-hop museum in Jamaica will spark the economy in Jamaica. You know, will build the economy in Jamaica because, uh, from my understanding, Jamaica has a history of being real poor, poverty. Jamaicans are poorer than they were two years ago, with 10% living in extreme poverty. Some can't even buy food to eat as they're unable to get a stable job because of little education. Here is a staggering statistic. 56% of children living in the U.S. Commonwealth of Puerto Rico live in poverty. That's compared to 22% of children for the entire United States. Behind the island's enchantment, there is a hidden truth. Puerto Rico's children are the poorest of the United States. Like, it feels like people are just trying to take the credit away from African Americans, give it to the Caribbeans, or give it to Jamaica just to spark the economy in the Caribbean islands, just to spark the economy in Jamaica. Uh, I'm going to give 90% of hip-hop to Jamaica. <laughs> hip-hop was given birth to by... Caribbean culture. But you know, we're going to keep everything respectful. And we're going to respectfully say to our Caribbean brothers and sisters, hip-hop does not belong to you. Hip-hop is not yours. Yes, some of the children of immigrants made great contributions to hip-hop, but only after you became African-Americanized. You made great contributions only after you started to emulate African-Americans. After you started to walk like us, talk like us, dress like us, our fashion, coordinate your clothes like how we coordinate our clothes. You got to Coordinate. Most people don't coordinate. So you got to coordinate. Then you make contributions to our hip hop culture. They learn all these styles just from us. Right, 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 right. So we're not gonna let somebody just come over here and say, "Oh, we did this. We right. started this. 
we did it. It's just not going to happen. Right. Not on my watch. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Yo, Buffet, listen. But, you know, this doesn't even have to be a disagreement. I want to say this. For the record, we can all agree. This could be a total agreement because... No, it can't be. Yeah, listen, 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 listen. Let me tell listen. you why it can't be agreement. Why it can't be? But you didn't even hear me out. Because I, you're, what, I, you, what you said there was ahead. agreement. This is the agreement. We started it. And anybody else that came after we started it, right. that's okay. That's y'all. You do right. okay. But don't come over here and say that you started what we started. Right. No, no. He, so what's right, the but, but this is what I'm saying. If Cool Herc can really be honest and truthful and say, hey, I didn't start the energy and the culture, but I started the break beats, you know, for the B-Boys. Listen, he started the break beat for the B Boys in 73, 74. Okay. Right? We can all agree with that, but the culture. Who can all agree with that? The That's culture, you can the agree culture, with that. Baby. I can't agree with that. Even G Belly, and I'm going to say my man in Brooklyn. Brooklyn's in the house. G Belly, and I'm going to say my man in Brooklyn. Uh, G <laughs> Belly said, he said, yo, Faze. Shout out all our African American, foundational African Americans right. from Brooklyn. And, Brooklyn's and, and in see, the that's house. What, see, what, I, you know, it's hard for me, especially me, uh -huh. being booby. It's hard for me to say, okay, well, whatever, because I already know what it was. I already know they're playing the drums, break beats, what break beats was. I already know how I used to get records, break beats from Woolworth. Corvettes. Let's stay on topic, though. Frank. That is topic. That, it's the that's the beat. The, that's the break beat. And so you can't say that her started break beat for the B boys. His whole movement of B boys. He's the one that started that. He's the okay. father of that. Okay, but see, see, that's enough. That's what always gets me mad. So I guess there's two definitions for B boys. All right, because our definition. Was Bronxdale boy? Friday night, the boys will come running. The boys will come running. Bronxdale boy. <laughs> All right, that's our. And you definition. know, I saw Bam Bam again, and he said the same thing. He said the spades. They was thinking the names, and one of the names was Bronxdale bad boys. Yeah, exactly. And, but he won't say it on video. I need. Yeah, I exactly. To Bam Bam. And Bam Bam and, is like and, one and of those Bam Bam, founders in the head. There of you go. And Bam he Bam. said but, um, it. He let you know. You know Bam Bam said like. Fat Mike's older, older brothers in them was bad boys or whatever name they went by, whatever. And they was trying to carry on that legacy. Some, at least that's what I got from it. But look, Faith, I want to say this. Why can't we all agree we could have come together as a hip-hop nation with the culture and the energy starting in 71 and Cool Herc's um, B-Boy Break Beat starting in 73. And I we could all you, come together you, as a hip-hop nation And with I'll that. tell you that. I'll tell you. Listen. Just like we just like we said, the re, the original B boys uh -huh. was Bronxdale boys. Okay. Okay. So wait a minute. So you can't say that he come and say, "Oh, B boys for whatever it stand for and his whatever," and say that he started that because just like we was like I said in the beginning. We were already doing break beats. We were already do, doing going crazy. As well, soon Faze, as the we can't take on. everything from him. Let's let Faze have. I mean, well, let okay, Faze. You know let let Cool Herc have his thing. I'm a, no, this is let Cool Herc have his thing, man. No, I'm not. Let him have his thing. I'm gonna let him. This is what I'm gonna have. In 1974, 73. Uh huh. Maybe. Right. Cool Herc came. What we were doing, and he incorporated. What his B boys? Okay, right. And so once and it his started, boy right. boy started B boys started doing that, right. then it started going a little bit more. Cause right. our our little our little B boys and stuff was really directed at Bronxdale, Monroe, Castle Hill, Bronx River, Soundview, Cozy Corner, right. uh, Lambert, a little bit of Lafayette, a little bit of Parchester. Okay, so okay. that's it. So now him being on the west side. He incorporated his B-Boys right. to do something. Right.
I agree with FaZe on this point. Mario was much more of a, you know, a street DJ in the Sandview area. Even though I did hear stories of Mario going to other parts of the Bronx and doing certain things. However, from my understanding, Cool Herc was also in the projects. And it seems like that's where a lot of people know Cool Herc or remember Cool Herc from. Uh, Webster Avenue, 3rd Avenue, Washington Avenue. The only thing I know Herc from, no one Herc from, is over there on 3rd Avenue by 3rd Avenue. The 9, 169th Street in Washington Avenue. That made Cool Herc Coke LaRock with the nigga twins like this. Webster houses, Butler houses, Governor Morris houses. And the sad thing is that Webster houses over there, Webster Avenue and 3rd Avenue is not being acknowledged with 1520 Sedgwick as, you know, a home of hip hop or whatever of hip hop, birthplace of hip hop. If this is where Cool Herc got a lot of notoriety or if this is where Cool Herc, you know what I'm saying, got uh, bigger or more prominent, it just seems to me that Webster Houses and the projects over there should also share some of the glory in hip hop along with 1520 Sedgwick Avenue. 169 Street Webster. They boxing profusely. And what? They was protecting her? What? Yeah, they was protecting her. You know what I'm saying? Because the way I see it, 1520 Sedgwick, that strip over there is more affluent. It's more working class people. It's more working class people who are not living in poverty like how they are on Webster Avenue. So the way I see it, you know, Webster houses and Butler houses should get some kind of acknowledgement also. It'd just be a good thing to see the projects and everything on Webster Avenue, 3rd Avenue, get acknowledgement as far as the home of hip hop or where Herc, you know, became prominent at. You know what I'm saying? It'd be good to see them get awarded with some kind of acknowledgement from the city and state of New York also. That was the meanest project on the west side back then. Webster? Yeah. yeah. So Cool Herc catered to where it was the meanest project. That's why he became widely known. For the rest of the Bronx. For the west side of the Bronx. For the, for the well, well, it was people from Harlem coming to see him. Red Alert, they say they was coming to see him from Harlem. But there you got people, but okay, but that's what I'm saying, see? And that's another thing. You got to understand that in 71 and 72, people were scared to come right. to Bronxdale. Right, 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 right. One thing about Bronxdale, if you didn't belong here, don't come here. Right, right. And if you came here, you knew somebody, and you respect. Right, yeah. So it that's was what Green and I try to say, too. Yo, it was a contained thing. Right, right. I want to say this too, because Green Eye try to say, Green Eye says that, um... Bronxdale was the Roman Empire! So when we was bringing out the music, it wasn't known like that. So when we was bringing out the music, it wasn't known like that. Bronxdale, so it's true though, what he said. He said, Bronxdale, what you saying? Whatever y'all was doing in 71 wasn't that big because people were scared to come here. Come here but right. however... The leaders from all across the Bronx was coming here. And before we knew it, I mean, people would come from all over. Mm. I mean, they'll come from Dog's Neck. Mm. they come from uh, Monroe. they come from over here. I mean, they were just coming in. And then on Wednesdays when we had our meetings, we would have like maybe 20 divisions. But this was, right here was the heart. Right. Everybody right. came here. Right. They used to come to Mario's little parties. The Spade leaders was coming here. Well, well yeah. They was coming and, here and yeah. they was coming to Soundview. Right, So the, right. to the leaders from each community around the Bronx wouldn't know what was going on in the and Bronx. And that's there. probably how it got But out. any random person right. couldn't right. come to Bronx Couldn't come to Bronx there. there. Right, or right. Soundview or any of these areas. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But the leaders did. The outsiders heard about somebody playing disco king manual playing music outside and they all came here so they said why we can't do it in our neighborhood and that's how it went right so and the leaders will bring it back to their community right and, so, and like you say and that's why it happened <laughs> right and that's and how so, hip-hop saw it right 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 okay so that's what right. it was so we, we agree then right we agree well, that we could that. come together as one hip-hop nation if they willing to honor 71 at the beginning of the energy. Right, right. And even Charlie Rock says that. All right, hip hop's energy begins in the street gang culture, very specifically the black space. Okay. Okay? The right. energy started with the right. gang culture, very right. specifically the black space. Right. All the original groups or, or, or crews, they became Casanovas and 17th Division Black Spades. 
Zulu Nation, the organization, 10th Division Black Spades, Chuck City Crew, 1st Division Black Spades. That's why, and, and that's another thing, why it says that it was they don't think we was extending the breaks, but that's exactly what we were doing because that's the only way we could dance to the dances that, that we were doing. Okay. So, you know, with me, especially, and you can ask anybody, and then you can ask Peter Williams and everything. I was the little drummer boy. Okay. Okay, so all of those things I did, and because I only had one turntable, and so I played on the drums, and my cousin would play the break, actual break on the record player. Okay. Simple. There you go. That was extended. So we're going to celebrate, we're going to get and together. And that's why we had, and, and that's why I showed you the M that had Phono 1 and Phono 2. Okay. Right, so I we could come together. With that. Good, so we could come together as one hip hop nation. I understand that Kool Herc did not start the culture and the energy of hip hop. He contributed big time to it. Right. Now, what Herc and Sydney did in 1520, I'm not taking nothing away from that, you know? Okay, but that's not the beginning of hip hop to you? Not from the beginning, no. no. That's the beginning of Herc and right. Sydney. That's about it. It's not the beginning of her cop. It's the beginning of her and her sister Cindy. It's the beginning of what they did, what they started. Wow. How they, their contribution to this art form, that's the day it started for them. So in closing, unfortunately, at this time, I don't have direct contact with people like KRS-One or Cool Herc or Grandmaster Flash to bring together some kind of event to canonize or, you know, to, to set hip hop history straight. Let's bring Cool Herc together with Sinbad, together with DJ FaZe, together with Green Eye Genie, together with Grandmaster Flash, together with Cool DJ D, Tyrone and Mixologist, Chuck City Breakdancers, together with the Nigga Twins, Clark Kent, whatever B-Boys, Break Boys that is still alive that was around in 1974, 1975. You know, let's bring the elders together to properly document hip hop. It's unfortunate that, you know, Africa Bambada is in the, um, the whole homosexual molestation uh, scandal, you know what I'm saying? Because Africa Bambada has a lot of answers to, uh, you know, this situation as far as documenting hip hop history. Africa Bambada is a, a, a integral part of hip hop history. However, as far as Zulu, uh, from my understanding, some of the original Zulu kings are still alive. You know what I'm saying? Like Ahmed, let's bring our Med to the table, you know what I'm saying? Ahmed has a great um, knowledge and um, understanding of hip hop history. Ahmed, scholar, been there from the beginning. I actually spoke with Ahmed a couple of years back, you know, behind the scene, short conversation. And from what I remember, he actually confirmed that breakdance came from spade dance. Like I say, the original Zulus have a very integral part in hip hop history, knowledge of hip hop history. But like I say, Michael Wayne TV, and hopefully we can get direct contact with some of the elders or maybe we can us one to document hip hop history. But you know, we need the, um, the people who was actually there on the street in 1971, 1970. 1972, 1973. We need the actual people who was actually there, popular in the Bronx streets. And, you know, we're not talking about grown man rap. You know what I'm saying? Like the Jubilaires, they was rapping in the 1940s. We're not talking about grown man rap. Pygmy mark him. We're not talking about that. We're talking about hip hop. And hip hop began from young teenagers and preteens. He catered to adults. Right. And adults were not hip hop. They, hip hop was a youth oriented movement. Hip hop was stolen from eight, nine, ten, eleven year old kids. Right, it's not go. adults. Right. It's youth right. oriented. Right. Any adults were very young adults. Very, very young. Right. And those adults were still connected to us. So we're starting from the point in the Bronx when the teenagers kind of sort of took over the street and started to express themselves through music, graffiti, etc. There's one thing Buster Rhymes said that I did actually agree with. And he said the origin of hip hop is the most neglected. You know what I'm saying? As far as study, research, and documenting. The most significant and neglected component about the history and the research of hip hop is its origin. Wow. We got to start changing that.